this first episode we're going to prepare our workspace for plugin development. For that we will install our IDE, which will be IntelliJ, and we're going to install our development server, where we can later test our plugins. So let's install the IDE first. Go to jetbrains.com, click on developer tools, IntelliJ IDE, download, and as you can see JetBrain provides two versions of IntelliJ. First the Ultimate Edition, which costs, and second, the Community Edition, which is free. I'm going to use the Ultimate Edition, but for this course, the Community Edition is totally okay. So go ahead and download it and install it. For the next step, we're going to install our development server. And for that, we're going to use PaperMC, which is a more performant fork of Spy.MC. And for this tutorial, we'll be using the latest version, which is 1.19.4 at the moment. So download the jar file, then show in folder. And for simplicity reasons, I will just rename it to server.jar and I will also create a new directory for the server. So new folder, paper 1.19.4, server and paste it right here. Now to actually start the server we will need a start script. We can either create it manually ourselves by creating a new text document, calling a start for example and then tap our code right here. The simplest version would be java-jar and the name of the server file, in our case it's server.jar and at the end I like to put no GUI. This simply prevents the server from showing its default GUI. Save and close. Then we're going to make it executable by, re by renaming it from start.txt to start.bat. And if you don't see the file extensions, make sure to enable them here on view, show and file name extensions. Now this was the most simplest version of a script that's not very performant. To get a better version and more performant version of the script, you can go to flags.sh, enter the name of your server jar here, you can select the memory you want, I select 4 gigabytes, and my operating system is Windows. Then simply copy the code, right click, show more options, edit, and delete everything and paste the copied code. Now you can run the server by double clicking on the start script and this terminal window will show up. Now as you can see the server generates a few files including this eula.txt. Eula stands for end user license agreement which you can read right here. And in order to use the server, you need to accept those agreements. You can accept it by changing EULA equals false to true, close, and then rerun the server. Now you can see the server generated a few more files, including a few um, configuration files and our worlds. This is the overworld, the nether, and the end. In this plugins folder is the place where we will later place our custom coded plugins. And this right here is the console. You can uh, type basic commands here. Those are just regular commands from the game, but uh, without the slash in front of it. And you can execute it by enter. And now to join the server, click on multiplayer, add server. Then you can give your server a name, for example, development server and the server address will be local host. Click on done and now you can join the server. And as you can see, if you join the server, you can change your game mode. And this is just a regular vanilla server. A few commands you should probably know are um, reload confirm to reload the server if you made changes in configuration files in short rl confirm and to stop the server you simply type stop this will shut the server down kick every player and now the server can't be reached anymore and in the next episode we're going to learn the basic outline of a plugin project and we will also code our first very simple plugin and put it on the server